All right, what is up, everybody? I am Tony Clapper here at Ranger Stop Cop Atlanta. I'm here with Michael Copen. How are you today, sir? I'm doing fabulous. Thank you for asking. Good, good. So, so far, how has the experience here been for you? Um, it's it's been amazing. It's my second year back. Um, most people don't. Most people know. Last year, I left because my baby was being born. Yeah. Uh, he's now like nine months. So it's been a beautiful year since uh, since his birth. But this uh, these cons are always really great. Uh, any of the Ranger stops and the Ranger stops and pops. I, I, I love going to all of them. Yeah, for sure, for sure. How does it feel to you know you you was a part of something like that and you're able to just keep carrying that on. You're able to keep. Uh, you know, just being a blessing to other people that was a fan of it. Like, how does that feel to be like you're a part of something like that? I mean, you know, like I always tell everyone, like, you know, it kind of hits you like oddly, like um, randomly too. like last week I'm in MegaCon. I'm looking around at all yeah. the superheroes. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I'm one of these guys. Yeah, you know, it's for pretty sure. cool. It's for like, sure. uh, you know, whether it's Batman, Superman, Power Rangers, you know, and you, you know, now that, you got all these new uh, characters, but it's like I'm one of these guys, and that's so cool. Yeah. Uh, to be a part of the Ranger Nation, it's just like my son growing up. He's gonna know that his dad's a Power Ranger, and that's 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 a, such an iconic thing. For sure. I already started buying stuff for his room and started stacking it with Power Ranger gear, just so he knows like his dad was a blue blue yeah. ranger he was part of that blue crew. Yeah. I was gonna say, that was uh, gonna kind of lead into my next question now with you having you know, your son, is it even, is it just even more exciting? Like you were saying, like you are a blue Ranger and now, I mean, is it just more yeah, it's, exciting? It's, it's way more exciting now having a son and being able to show him all the things I accomplished yeah. and how he can accomplish anything and then just keep continuing to push him to the highest level possible. Yeah. Uh, I, I just, I hope and pray he, he just excels more than I've ever done. Um, I, I'm going to give him all the tools I can to prepare for life and uh, just keep him focused and keep him um, hopefully right on the on the right page that he just does the right thing and, and makes the best choices. But I'm going to be proud of him no matter what he does. Awesome. 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 So at the time that um, your show was starting, Time Force was starting, you know, Power Rangers is already kind of this huge thing. I mean, what was it like knowing that you were about, like, how was what was the emotion like going into that like wow like i'm gonna be joining something that's kind of kind of blown up kind of crazy yeah you know i mean I, I, like i have a picture hanging in my dad's house of, uh, of the mighty morphin uh pit rangers that i drew with colored pencils oh, uh so i drew that when i was like 11 or 12 years old wow. and then i i ended up becoming a power ranger so having that iconic picture that i drew and um and now becoming one just knowing i'm a part of a legacy that that's that's going to live on forever i mean it's it's like again it's just truly just the best experience that i i think i could have been through in my life you know there's a lot of i think the only other best thing that i i i would want to be a part of is something in marvel like being one of the marvel characters now with them rebirthing this marvel uh franchise i just enjoy watching all the marvel movies so now i'm like man it'd be cool to be on that too but what what uh what marvel character would you want to would you want to play you know, uh, I don't know. A lot of people keep asking me that question, but I think that um, I think the best one that's suited for me is the uh, Submariner. Uh, you know, so um, I would uh, I would enjoy playing that role. Uh, it's you know, it's kind of like the Aquaman of the Marvel world, and yeah. I mean, he ties into the OG everything. You know, yeah, so yeah, he, yeah. he he would be. I mean, I don't know if they're gonna bring him out in the Illuminati uh, movie that they're doing. I mean, but. I hope that I get casted or at least have the opportunity to audition for that. I did I did a test for the one of the Thor henchmen in the original Thor movie. Um, actually, it's the, the, the role they, they gave to the role that the Japanese character in that movie okay. that, that uh, was that was his henchman. But originally in the comics, it was more of a uh, like a more of a, a Viking type yeah. of figure, uh, dark hair. So I went into testing for that. As an option actually it was me and exhibit the rapper wow, and wow, uh, okay. it was between us two and then none of us got it they went with that actor uh the, the japanese guy i think he was big in japan and had big sales for japan gotcha. but i had to sign an nda for the audition i couldn't tell people the script i read and it was so cool i thought i was going to be like in a thor movie and then i wasn't so to be um you know as actors we're just always trying for the next thing uh, i've gotten close to so many roles but to be a lead like the submariner that, that would be a uh, dream yeah, just a dream right. i mean definitely life-changing for your career yeah or, or even flip something that would be like a 
an ethnic Iron Man. Why not? Yeah, hey, you never, I mean, you, you never, you never know. You never know. That's what, how Lucas either. started. You know that, yeah. right? Lucas was supposed to be a white James Dean character. His name is Lucas Kendall. Kendall. They were looking for a blonde hair, blue eye Kendall. So Lucas Kendall and uh, all the guys I auditioned against were white. And then they they said I was more of an ethnic James Dean, and that's how I got the role. Nice, nice. Yeah. What kind of preparation? You've been in tons of different projects. You've been a part of those, a lot of different things. What kind of preparation do you take going into, you know, a new role? Um, like I said, you have, you've been a diverse amount of characters. What kind of preparation does that take? Dude, I, I mean, I, I take I take my roles very serious. Um, I'm even like even when I'm telling my producer right now, I have a phone call with him, and it's just the, now I'm directing a movie, so I take my directing job serious and my acting job very serious. Um, I I literally create an entire story plot. I write a a semi short story of my character, um, his backstory, where he is now, where I believe he's going to go in the future. I create a I create a really good um, outline, so I know clearly his objectives, his point of view of every character. Um, I, I I have a clear outline of, of of his circumstance and his emotional line through each circumstance, and then I live truthfully in those moments, and I allow my emotions to change within the scene. So as a true actor, the Meisner technique, we're learned to listen and respond truthfully. So I go in with an emotional line, with an objective, with all the tools that I have set, but. I allow that to change and I react truthfully in the moment. Um, so every character I, I play, um, I do the same type of research. I don't care if it's small, uh, you know, day player role or a big movie or a TV series. Uh, I treat every character the same. He is all about the business. And that's that's what I think. I think that's what fans want to see anyway. They want to see, you know, somebody who's dedicated to the character. Yeah. So I would, for one, be super excited if you got a Marvel role here. That sounds like. You would do your homework. You see a lot of people who don't do the homework, and it's yeah. like it'd be good to see somebody who does the homework. Yeah, it is. It would, you know, Power Rangers was my first job, so I didn't get a chance to apply the the knowledge I know now on that role. So yeah. like a lot of that was just pure, um, just charisma and natural raw talent that I had. Um, it was just basically going with the flow every day. But now the, the knowledge I know today, being able to apply that to that character, yeah. I feel like there'd be more dynamic. Um, you know, range within that, within the emotions and within the storyline of the character. I definitely would have fought more for my character to have more of a say. I think I kind of sat back and just let let it go, uh, let everything go. And that's usually typically what happens. Like it, it is what it is. You can't change anything. But but I have noticed as a, as an actor, you can kind of push more if you bring bring up some pretty decent ideas to the writers and the and the director. They they often have like an insight to be like, you know what, let's change that, let's add that or adapt that to to your character. So I think that um, if you're smart, you can actually add more to your character if, if you want to. Nice, nice. Yeah. So you, you being a producer, would you ever be interested in producing a season of Power Rangers? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I've been, I was probably one of the first advocates to produce a Power Ranger uh, type film. You know, I did an Indiegogo in 2000 and I think it was like 13, 14. And I never was able to uh, per se make that, but partially because like I had all the Rangers in it um, yeah. and no one helped me post. So. It was kind of like a flop on the Indiegogo, but I kept pushing and I'm still going along trying to make my project happen. Yeah. Um, but in the meantime, I've been directing and producing other features, but I would love to do a series on Time Force that's just, yeah. you know, dedicated to Time Force and dedicated to the, you know, like what, where the Shatter Grid is going. You know, I love yeah. that energy, being able to time travel to any point in time and us, us being able to help any other ranger. I think that would be amazing. I was going to say with uh, with Boom Studios doing what they're doing now in the comics, I feel like it's kind of like breathed life back into Power Rangers. Like not that it was it was ever not, but it, like it, they just kind of gave it that extra yeah. push. Would you, I mean, a Time Force series from Boom Studios and they ask you to do some promotion or whatnot, would you be, would you be interested in that kind of thing? I'm, I'm all, look, I'm all about, at this point in my life, in my career, I'm completely in the driver's seat. I'm not, yeah. as an actor, I was always auditioning. I was always waiting for someone to give me a job. Yeah. Being a producer, director now, and a writer, I'm, I'm actually creating every opportunity for myself. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I, if I, if I were to get the rights or be able to obtain the rights to do something Time Force related, 100% would just be uh, so down if Boom Studios asked me to do anything. If anyone asked me to do anything, 100% uh, would be down. I was actually supposed to do the return episodes that Font did on on, on the TV series. Oh, but okay. I, every time they asked me, I was shooting some other thing, oh, okay, and I okay. couldn't do it. I, I can't remember the first time I think I was shooting. 
probably I think I was shooting uh I don't know, it was Night of the Demons movie or one of the movies oh, okay. I did. So I was doing some movie, you know, I was getting paid. It was a hard decision. Obviously, Power is like, we'll give you two grand if you come here. And I'm like getting 80 grand to go. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you got to pick and choose. But, you know, if you look at the longevity, it's like, man, I should have just did Power Rangers, you know, because, you know, because uh, that Night of the Demons movie just didn't do anything. It was right. a paycheck. But, you know, you do movies, you get paid well, and some of them just flop. They don't, you never right, see right, them. Right, right, right. So many movies I've done, it just, they just don't. They just fought, they just sit there. Yeah. So I mean, I'm glad Power Rangers has kept the longevity that it's kept. Um, you know that that is a blessing in itself. As an actor, we we're so appreciative of that because, like I said, I've done. I could probably name five films you guys have never seen, like Awaken, Twenty Four Seven Fahrenheit, um, my work, the Price movie I directed, <laughs> <laughs> Dystopia I directed that's on Amazon. I mean, most people don't watch these movies, um, but you know, I did them. Worked really hard. They're out. Yeah, they look great, but no one watches them. But the good thing is, like, when you're on a hit show, like a Power Rangers, people watch it. Yeah. So it's like you're always battling that constant, like, what you're doing versus what people are actually seeing you do. Yeah. Okay. Okay. One more. Okay. So my last question is, if you could have been on any other season of Power Rangers, like you would have been a character, you would have been a ranger on a different season what season would you have wanted to be a ranger on uh i think i mean it, it, i mean it's so cliche to say it but i mean obviously the original mighty morphin right, right, right i right. mean everybody wants to be the the original yeah yeah uh and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lie and say i don't want to be the original um there are some great seasons because to be honest my favorite i mean not just because i'm in it but i think time force is the second yeah. best yeah, season yeah. um i think the writing was incredible the suits look great um uh, I mean, other than it missing like an animal connection or yeah. some sort of connection, I think, I think the animal connection did something, um, but sometimes the animal connection without the so the time force had the suits and they had the storyline and all that, but if it connected something else like an animal of some sort, I think that would have been another added bonus to time force. Yeah, um, and they could have they could have went a different route other than dinosaurs. They could have went with like lions and something like that. But I do think, I do think the aesthetics of the suits in combination with the the, the heart and soul of an animal and then and then the combination of the colors yeah and then all of those combined is what made mighty morphin what it is yeah so i think every other season if you look at it it's like they try all these different things but they're they haven't found that perfect combination again because i think that's what it is yeah. it's like it's literally you got the animals on this but the, the suits look you know and then the aesthetics look good on the suits but then it's like there's no connection to this animal soul so and then the story or the storyline might be off so I think it's got to be a mix of all those things. But, I mean, obviously, the original Mighty Morphin, this is what I grew up on. Yeah. Um, I would love to have been on, on that one. Awesome, awesome. All right. Okay. Um, what do you want to tell the people where they can find you, how they can follow you? Yeah, just uh, follow me at Michael Copon on, on Instagram. I'm, I haven't really dove on TikTok lately, I, uh, but you can follow me on Instagram. I've been off the uh, internet uh, recently I've just been diving in on the directing producing side of things but I'm going to be punching in again really soon but uh, this is my biggest feature uh, I'm doing a million dollar feature Danny Trejo is playing Magellan it's a story of Magellan and how uh, he actually died in the Philippines and Lapu Lapu who I'm playing is, is the one who killed him so he's our William Wallace if mm. you've seen the movie Braveheart uh, so he fought for our freedom against Spain and Magellan and the tyranny un un under Spain um, so he won and there's a statue of Lapu Lapu in the Philippines, in Cebu. So I'm playing that character. We have amazing cast. Uh, Dante Bosco is playing Udong. Mm. Um, and then also I've got, um, actually, I casted Hector David Jr. from uh, from Ninja Steel, mm. Ninja, St Ninja Storm. He's playing my Enrique character. Um, but we have the biggest star of the Philippines, Bea Alonzo. She's got like 17 million followers on Instagram. She's She's got 20 billboards in the city. You guys don't know who she is, but Philippines is in love with her. Uh, and I'm so blessed to have her as my lead actress. But um, it's the biggest film I've directed. It's a million dollar budget. My second next one after this is a two point eight million dollar one. So I'm finally moving up the ladder. Uh, I'm not doing like hundred thousand like indie bu budget films. But um, yeah, man, I hope to I hope to inspire you guys. Hope to make you guys proud. I hope to be a, a, a Martin Scorsese, James Cameron, Mel Gibson type director and also act still in my features and and bring some incredible stories to life for you guys awesome well we're looking forward to it thank you again yeah, thank you and uh stay tuned everyone we're gonna keep going keep it rolling